Yo, 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 you know what this is, man. This is your favorite channel, man. This is CTB. Chin Tuck Boxing. I'm your boy, Jay Slay. I'm about to chin check you with this one. Uh, before I get into my chin checking you, let me first say, can you please do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel, man. We drop content like this every week. Also, hit the thumbs up button. How about trying to grow and grow the sport of boxing? But let me get to the chin check, man. Uh... If you like me, man, if you are a real diehard boxing fan and you actually watch boxing, not just for the names, but you watch boxing to enjoy the sweet science of it all, you enjoy Saturday night, man. Saturday night was a great, great night of boxing, man. Courtesy of ESPN, The Zone, and Showtime, man. They gave all those channels, man, gave us great, not only I won't say all the cars was great. I'm not going to go on that limb. But I will say they all gave us a great fight on every car. Every car had a fight that you should have watched. If you have not watched that car or watched that fight, you should have at least watched the highlights of a fight on that car. Uh, but we're going to talk about one fight in particular on this video. The one fight in particular I want to talk about is the Conor Ben versus Chris Algieri fight. That was courtesy of the zone. Now the fight, the fight went how I thought it would go, only because of where I think Chris Algieri is now in his career. Uh, I consider Chris Algieri as a gatekeeper to a gatekeeper when it comes to the sport of boxing. If you know what I mean, pretty much what I'm trying to say is I don't consider Chris Algieri a person you will need to fight to get to a championship level. I consider Chris Algieri a a name on a resume that can get you to another name in a resume. Uh, Chris Algieri is more famous for pretty much being beat up by B plus level fighters, like B plus and up, like from Ruzin Pavlovnikov. He pretty much is famous for beating Ruzin Pavlovnikov. But if you remember that fight, his eye was swollen shut. He was beat to shit in that fight, but he pretty much won on the scorecards because he won majority of the rounds. He pretty much survived a beating and out and outboxed a slugger, per se. But then he went and fought Manny Pacquiao, who I would consider an A-plus fighter, an A-fighter. At the time Chris Algeria fought him, I would say A-minus. He wound up being knocked down five times in that fight and wound up losing in, in Manny Pacquiao's spectacular fashion. But that only made Chris Algeria more famous. So Chris Algeria pretty much gained his name for being in tough fights and you know what I'm saying holding not I'm gonna say I'm not gonna say hold his own I will say making a rough go of it on the points scale not so much the beating scale not so much of the he hurting his opponent scale but more so on he's winning rounds scale so that beating for Manny Pacquiao earned him quote unquote earned a Earl Spence fight and was Earl Spence finally put Chris Algeria in his place and KO'd him. So, if I'm Conor Ben and I'm on Conor Ben's, you know what I'm saying, management team, Chris Algeria is a great name to break into the American market. Uh, Conor Ben, to me, he did a beautiful display of boxing on Chris Algeria in the early rounds. And he wound up catching Algeria in the trap. I, I, I saw the trap coming a long time ago. Really, he could have caught him in that trap early in the fight. But, you know, Conor Ben, he's still young. He's still growing in the sport. But the trap he caught Chris Algeri is, it's kind of the same trap that Earl Spence caught him. Chris Algeri has a habit of squaring his shoulders against the ropes. And when he squared his shoulders against the ropes, the jab, the faint jab straight from Conor Ben caught it, made it the night over. It caught the night over for Chris Algeri. And it was a KO victory for Conor Ben. But... There was a quick description on what I think of this whole, those two fighters and what I think about Chris Algeri. But my main topic of this video, real quick, is the call out after the fight. Conor Ben called out Adrian Broner after the fight. I want to break that down really, 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 really quick. Um, I, am, I am a fan of Adrian Broner. I'm not going to lie. In my opinion, Adrian Broner is a necessity in this sport of boxing. He is needed in the sport of boxing. It is too many good guys 
in the sport. Too many guys who are saying the right things and trying to do the right moves and they're trying to stay on the positive side of not only fight fans, but trying to stay on the positive side of the media of boxing, the mainstream media of boxing. Adrian Broner is not that. Adrian Broner is a guy who goes against the grain. He speaks his mind and he doesn't care who pays to see him lose. Quote unquote pays to see him lose. With that being said, Adrian Broner, he is the persona that Mayweather pretty much made famous. He is the persona that pretty much the African American who is hated by a lot of other people who do not understand where he comes from. Now, he doesn't have the the, the skill or the resume of a Floyd Mayweather, but he does have that same level of hate, in my opinion, that a Floyd Mayweather, you know what I'm saying, built up, per se. Um, with that being said, he is a he's a target, man. Whether he has a, has a belt, whether he's still active, whether he's in the mainstream, whether he is on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, it don't matter. Adrian Broner would still be a target for a lot of these up and comer, up and coming fighters. And Conor Ben is one of those. Conor Ben knows he wants to stay in the American market because there's no bigger market in boxing other than America. You just not that Chris Algieri. You're not quite ready to go to the next level, which I would say is a B level, B plus level, which I would say in a welterweight, it would be pretty much like a, I know Sean Porter just finished uh, retiring, but Sean Porter level. Sean Porter was what I would call a B plus level. He is not ready for that level yet. So of course, you would call out Adrian Broner, who's been not only not looking good his last couple fights, but he's also coming off a long layoff. But let's talk about Adrian Broner real, really, really, like really, really quick. Adrian Broner, he begged his promoter, Al Heyman, he begged him after his last performance to give him more fights so that he can stay more active and he can stay entrenched in the sport of boxing. He didn't get those fights. And a lot of fans are either A, wondering why he didn't get those fights, or B, not understanding why he needed to call out those dates to get those fights let me first say that pbc man they are of course a showtime and fox promotion exclusively they only work to do do those two telecasts they only go through fox and they only go through showtime so they have a certain amount of dates lined up so if i'm al Heyman going off of adrian broner's last performance i am not in a rush to give Adrian Broner one of my, let's say, 35, 40 dates that I have a year on one of those telecasts. I am more so quick to do what I did this past weekend. I am more so ready to get the Filipino crowd a shot. I am ready to give uh, uh, Donaire. I'm ready to give Donaire a date before I get Adrian Broner a date because Adrian, because Donaire is on a win streak. He has a, he has a following and of course, like you've seen this past Saturday, he is still dedicated to the sport of boxing. And he got a knockout this week, this past weekend. A devastating knockout to the body. It was a great show. If you missed it, go back and watch it. So, if I'm, if I'm Al Heyman, I am more prepared to give a card or a date to a guy like that before I give Adrian Broner, who, against Santiago, he won the fight, but... He was supposed to knock out Santiago. Let's be honest. He was supposed to have a KO in that fight. Adrian Brunner didn't let his hands go. Um, I'm not going to say he looked out of shape, but you can kind of tell he was a little bit ring rusty. But that ring rust on top of the gun shyness, the overall being gun shy of letting his hands go in the ring, made it a boring, boring card, man. And... To put Adrian Broner as a main event of another card like that would be a waste. So I, I think, in my opinion, and this is in closing, I think Adrian Broner needs to, need to humble himself. He needs to be a co-main event on a, I'm not going to lie, on a, on a regular card, not on a pay-per-view card. Possibly on a pay-per-view, yes, you, he could probably still do a co-main on a pay-per-view, depending, depending on the main, the main event. The main event has to be a blockbuster main event. But if it's not a blockbuster main event, then Adrian Broner needs to lower his standards a little bit and go back to being another 10-rounder 
in that co-main event to build his name back. But with that being said, Conor Ben is not that name to do that with. Conor Ben is on the up and up. Adrian Broner is on the I need to climb back up, if that makes any sense to you. Uh, Conor Ben is fresh off a win. He's young. He's undefeated. He doesn't know how to be defeated, if you, if you know what that means. He doesn't... What I mean by that is he doesn't have a fear of being defeated. He has no doubt in his mind when he steps in the ring that he's going to win that fight. But when Adrian Broner steps in that ring, in the back of his mind, he has to to not lose the fight, I feel, in my in my opinion. Adrian Broner will be more so trying to not lose the fight while Conor Ben be trying to go in there and knock Adrian Broner out. And that's a bad recipe if Adrian Broner doesn't have his confidence. So, if I'm Al Heyman, I am trying to match Adrian Broner up with a, let's say, um, Hisacito Lopez. Uh, shit. Somebody on that level. If I called, if I called Chris Algeri a gatekeeper, a gatekeeper of a gatekeeper, Adrian Broner needed to fight somebody that's a gatekeeper of a gatekeeper of a gatekeeper. And I know Santiago was that. I know Santiago was a third level fighter. But... With Adrian Broner's last performance, he need to stay at that level. But Conor Ben, man, let's talk about Conor Ben in closing, like I said earlier. Conor Ben needs to step his game up. I think Conor Ben, he doesn't need to be calling out Adrian Broner at this moment. I think Conor Ben needs to be calling out the next level, man. I'm being honest. If I'm Conor, if I'm Conor Ben's handlers and I'm trying to break into the American market, yes, Adrian Broner has a name. And yes, in your opinion and in your thoughts adrian broner is an easy win for you but you have to understand that adrian broner adrian broner handlers are not going to give you that fight man they're not going they're not going to do that especially when you're fighting on the zone al Heyman is not going to i won't say let but al Heyman is not going to advise adrian broner to take that fight now I know you can throw money at AB and if AB is really as money struck as people think he is and he really needs a payday the way people think he is, then that's a different story. But with that being said, I don't see AD Hearn throwing a boatload of money at Adrian Broner. But who knows? We we'll watch and see. It's boxing, anything can happen. But I would love to see Connor Ben in with the gatekeepers for real. I would love to see him in there with the you know what I'm saying, the Stanley Onuses and the uh I don't know if I pronounced his name right. If I didn't pronounce his name right, I apologize. But I'd love to see Conor Ben in with, in with him. The uh, Ortizes. Uh, I'd love to see him in there with a... Uh, shit, let me think. Top of my head really, really quick. No name, no name, no name. Uh, I would say Boots. But I don't see him beating Boots. I think he's... I think if I'm on his handlers, I don't want to put him in there with Boots. But I would, I, mean, I would love to see that fight. Me as a fan. Uh, because I'm a Boots fan, so I'm kind of biased, but yeah, I would like to see him with those level fighters, man. I would like to see Conor Ben prove himself to that next level and show that he's here and that he's ready to contend for a belt. And fighting Adrian Broner at this level is just a cash grab, and Adrian Broner needs to get his name back before he takes a fight like Conor Ben. But with that being said, man, this is a quick chain check. I am your boy Jay Slay, and of course, this is CTB. This is Chan Tuck Boxing. I'm out. Peace.